and understanding his role and just kind of the familiarity of the offense already. Uh, it's been good to see those two kind of just get out there for a day and run around a little bit. So how much do you try to put in during the spring, or is it just basically just, just trying to get that, that depth chart? Yeah, it's a lot's with the depth chart, but this is the time of the year where you can scale things back and you just start working at the basics of things. You know, I'm not trying to to beat the defense every single play and scheme them up and, and try to get into things. I want to see these kids, uh, you know, being more efficient with their play. And the main conversation that we've been having with the offense is, is that we want to see all 11 on the same page. And uh, with, with our installs, we get the very base stuff, and we just want to see technique. We want to see assignments, alignments, just uh, just execution of what we're trying to accomplish. And, um, you know, we're tw- it's our time, too, as coaches. We've sat down for the past two months and been – been tweaking things of what we want to change for the spring, and uh, we're we're getting a lot of good tape out there. And uh, as you saw yesterday, we didn't, you know, some of the pictures we didn't even have football helmets on yesterday. So it was more of teaching and a lot of individual work and just trying to work at the little things uh, to get these kids on the same page. Can you talk about the the groups first? The running back group, how does it look? Running back group is looking good. It, again, we got a lot of kids that have played or been here at least, you know, with uh, across the board. But in the running back group, you've got Kennedy and and Martell that have had some really good touches across the across the board for the past couple of years. And uh, uh, adding Sinkfield in the mix, which I'm very fired up for that kid. It, you're going to see a great competition out of those guys as well. Um, you know, Sinkfield is, you know, he had an opportunity last year, I thought that could play for us. But, you know, we were so loaded with running backs that it was in best intentions for him just a red shirt. And, right. and now you're going to see him compete and try to get on the field. So with that, with that group of running backs, very pleased with him. What about the receivers? Receivers again. You got a veteran group with mm-hmm. you know Sills and and Marcus and and Gary. You got some guys with some good touches, good yards, a lot of valuable playing experience. Um, the thing that we're really concerned about, or just the emphasis is, is who's going to be that backup. I want to see guys step up and and. And I thought our problem last year is we didn't have solid backups, and those receivers played way too many plays. That's one of the reasons why their stats were so high is because they didn't ever come off the field. But as you track it, as the season went on, they wore down. And we want to be able to rely on some other people to step in there and make some plays for us so we're not constantly you know, running these kids into the ground so we can give them a breather at times. But uh, with, the, with Dom Maiden and uh, the, the strides he's making so far, uh, I'm pleased with him, but I need to see some consistency and see how long that lasts. What about TJ? TJ, it's good seeing him too. You know, he's a he's a great addition, um, especially with Kron leaving. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got a guy that's a little more older, uh, mature, um, so that that kind of separates the classes out a little bit. But uh, he, he's definitely out there running around, and I, hopefully he can give us that spark. Um, you also look at Reggie Roberson as well. He's got that speed, um, and he's been having a great offseason so far. Again, it goes down to consistency with those guys, and really the more the most consistent players are going to play for us. What about the offensive line now? Offensive line, we're starting to get some depth. This is uh, compared to last spring, we can actually put two serviceable offensive line groups out there, um, which is, is very pleasing. And you know, last year we had a lot of. Uh, kids that were playing that didn't have very much experience, mm-hmm. now they're building off that. So where Coach Wick is in terms of the progression of the line, he doesn't have to go through a lot of the base stuff where these kids have repped it and seen it already. So we went down to the basics yesterday and, and you know we were just doing like an inside zone and we just dissected it and we ran it versus every imaginable book possible where these kids are making calls and, and, and communicating. And again, that's that's part of our emphasis is all 11 on the same page, so our communication's got to be clear where I want all these guys working together as one unit. Who you get a guard? Hey, guards, we, we've got a lot mixing in and out of there. Um, you got Isaiah Hardy, and you even got Kelby Wickline moving in from tackle down. You know, Coach Wickline plays a lot of different bodies like that. You've got Josh Sills, who got some valuable experience there, and you got some of the young guys with Blaine Scott and uh, Bryce and Mays, those guys are just all getting in the mix. But the thing that I'm pleased with is, is we're getting more scholarship alignment. You know, where we were taking hits, and we weren't, we didn't have enough numbers to put together a couple offensive lines. But now we're we're getting where we got two solid groups of scholarship offensive linemen rolling. What did you learn from your experience last year, and anything you'll change? I, you know, I think you adapt. Like it, it's the first year. You know, normally. The success of this offense, especially with the quarterback, the second year is when it takes off. You know, there's, there was a lot of things where Will and I, uh, we had to teach on the run. 
You know, they're, they, he's a kid that is a, a gym rat, and you guys know how he spends a lot of time up here watching tape. So you have a lot of good conversations, but that experience of being back out there for a year is going to help him out a lot. And I, I think that where we're at offensively, we need to be more efficient with, you know, getting into the proper play calls and stuff. And I'm putting a lot more on Will in terms of checks. You know, and, and and trying to get everybody in the best position to have success. And you know, where at sometimes last year we knew that, you know, you could call something and Will was going to make it out, like make it work and hold on to another second for the ball and make a play. But and now now we're trying to get into better play calls and stuff. And that's been kind of the 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 approach that we've taken with Will, especially with the game management, understanding down and distances and times and and what to do in certain situations. I know obviously more are going to come, but with with the tight end bodies, you know, how does that change your offense? Hey, a lot. <laughs> the tight ends change it a lot. Now you can you can start getting expanding the edge a little bit. You know, right now, like last year, we never really attached the tight end in terms of you know you always have an upside where that gets difficult at times to run the ball into, and even it helps with pass rush. You know, with four defenses, now you can expand the edge a little bit and and. Uh, it, get a little more creative and make the defenses adjust for a lot more things than just being a fullback set majority of the time. Do you limit Will at all? I mean, just because of injury, or do you just let him rip? No, he's repping. He's full go. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, he's taking every rep with the ones. You know, he. I'm always cautious with all the quarterbacks from the first week of spring on throwing too much because their arms really not are not conditioned. But, again, those kids have been – throwing the ball around a lot over the past couple months, so uh, I, th I think they're the full go on everything. Yeah. How do you bring along Trey Lowe? Trey? Yeah. yeah. How do, how do you bring hey, we threw him in the fire yesterday. I think that's how you get him to go. You know, uh, there's a lot of things that quarterbacks have to go through, and, you know, he's a very cerebral kid. He's smart. He's a coach's kid. So he can sit there and tell me what to do on every single play. It's a lot different when you throw him out there in the fire and you're trying to operate it under a 25-second, 40-second clock. So that's kind of his learning curve of trying to speed it up and go as fast as possible and, and start to understand it. But with these younger quarterbacks throwing them in the fire and the more reps that you can get with them, the better they're going to be. Obviously, you would prefer him not splitting his uh, attention, I presume. With, uh, base, yeah. with baseball? Yeah. Even you know, it, I, I, I look at it both ways. You know, the thing that's amazing with the kid is, you know, he, he – wants to do everything and like I got to tell him you can't you know and there was a time yesterday where he he did the the trip with the baseball team and we're like I'm like don't even show up to the offices you know you don't need to come in we're going to be meeting but we can catch up some other time and he comes up there and he looks like you know he's running on E and I'm like you got to go home we send him home you know he's just a very eager kid he's he's uh, always wants to be a part of it but you know you would like for him to have more time with us but at the same time, he'll catch it up. You know, he, it's just being eager and not understanding it. But as time goes on, he's going to get more comfortable with the whole this scenario. This is probably a great year anyway with uh, with, with Will, Will being here. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's not as demanding. You know, you still want him to come along because there's that backup spot that he's competing for, and and he understands that too. With you know the. The more time he puts in the football, the more opportunity he probably has to be that second guy. So, you know, you kind of just put that on him and let him balance it out a little bit. And Coach Maisie does a good job of working with us and, and, and making sure we don't run the kid in the ground. <laughs> How many arms do you have? Uh, three right now. Count Trey. Count Trey. Not good enough, I'm right? <laughs> Is that enough? For spring? Uh, for spring. Spring always gets a little dicey with arms. Because then you start getting the walk-ons to come in in the fall camp. You know, you, you try to get around th with three arms right now. That's that's not bad. Right. You know, you would like to have one more, but when you get into fall camp, you'll probably get two more walk-ons, so you get around five arms for fall camp. You don't have to throw, do you? No, <laughs> I'm done with those days. <laughs> I can't. Without, without Crawford, how how does uh, the running? Uh, Approach change. I uh, no, it's the same. You know, it, it, the one thing that I'm been really hard on right now for this off season is everybody getting on the same page and the running backs mirroring their footwork with the offensive line, the offensive line being on the same page, and and that's something that we're taking a lot of pride in right now because I didn't think we were very efficient running football last year, and and that's something that you, you've got to run the football to win games, and that's something that we're taking a lot of pride in right now, and. And going back to the basics, and this is a good time right now where 
you don't have to have multiple run schemes in. You know, you're going to get your top three, four schemes that you do, and you're going to get really good at them over the course of the next 15 practices. And who 